What is going on, everybody? We are your friendly neighborhood fanboys. Welcome back to the podcast. And today we are discussing something very dear to all of our hearts, but mainly to Alex's heart. <laughs> yes. Dune Part 2. It's national we holiday. It. <laughs> national <laughs> holiday <laughs> today for me. Absolutely. Uh, before we get into this talk, though, if you're visiting us on YouTube, please hit that like button. It really, really does help us out. Subscribe to the channel for more of the podcast content and our regular content. And uh, if you're joining us on podcast platforms, please subscribe to our podcast. Like it, rate it. We really appreciate it. Let's get into it. You know what? Can <laughs> can I actually propose? I want you guys to start it off oh, first. Oh man! Sorry about I would that. like to. I just want to hear what all you guys thought about it first, and then I will. I'll jump in after. Okay. But um, call you a swimming pool. <laughs> um, bracket drank. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> go right ahead. What'd you guys think, honestly? Shall Dan I, Uzio. I'll lead the way. I'll I'll try to keep it brief. It was incredible. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, honestly, it was it was like the best movie I've seen in a very long time. Like after Oppenheimer, I can't really think of anything else that like comes yeah. close to this. So, yeah, incredible movie. Loved everything about it. I really have no complaints at all. Like it was, it was it was ten out of ten for me. <laughs> Tinnitus. Um, yep. <laughs> King Leonidas' cousin. Exactly. Yes. Um. Yeah. I actually thought it was the worst thing I've ever seen in mm-hmm. my life. It was pretty. Pretty bad. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I notoriously like was like I liked the first one. I thought it was a well made film. Let's I just, be real. Ben hate no. I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> personally, I just and Denis Villeneuve is my my like favorite current director. I would say, and I was just not a fan of I think just the material in general. But this kind of gave part one context for me and yeah. helped me appreciate it more. But I loved part two. Very, very much so. Love oh, part good. two. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you so Alex much. Alex just smiling yeah, yeah. through his teeth. I could see the, uh, the um, eye twitch, but he was like, not a fan <laughs> no, of the material. Yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. Here, this is what I, okay. <laughs> what I will say to that, I have teased Ben a lot about not being absolutely in love with um, part one. I mean, I think you like part one, I think the most, like next to me. Yes. And then you, and then Ben. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So I do tease him, but honestly, I do tease him in a, you know, just like a, a fun, you know, um, friend way. But yeah. I mean, Almost I can. Almost like a friendly and fanboy way. Mm-hmm. Oh. Definitely not a Fremen Ooh. way. No. 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 The Fremen the, neighborhood Well, apparently boys. the Fremen like to joke around now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> See? Right there. He moves. He moves. <laughs> At least I'm not great. Um, <laughs> no, but honestly, like what, what I will Spoiler say alert, by the way. to yeah. anyone that. To anyone that didn't really like like part one or maybe was intrigued by certain aspects of it, but I can totally see the complaint that some people had where, you know, it moved too slowly, right? And I think that mm-hmm. was the big thing for you is like it was a lot of world building. It was a lot of setting up pieces yeah. and it just, yeah, like it's, for me, it's not anticlimactic just because I have like, you know, the book is very near and dear to my heart so you know in my head i kind of know where the overarching story is going sure mm-hmm. but for someone that does not and just jumping in the movie it can look kind of anticlimactic it ends with that fight with um paul versus um Jamis, and he gets inducted kind of into um like the fremen but i can i can totally understand that well most people are used to the whole like third act big cg fest right yes mm-hmm. so it's like where is which that i hate notorious yeah it wasn't yeah. even about that for me it was and like it's funny because i just would have liked to like you know us obviously like i would have sat there for five hours if it was just one whole you know entity yeah, for sure but i think the fact that it gets cut off at such a point where like you're excited to see him like ride a sandworm and then it just ends i was just like ah i was saying like, that it doesn't Alex... have that like rewatchability for me whereas now that i've seen two it's like it recontextualizes. It recontextualizes all of one, and now I can see it as a big cohesive story. Yeah, and right, now right. I'm loving the lore. I'm loving yeah. the characters, the story, the dialogue, the visuals, like everything so much more. So yeah. Yeah. I still I still really love I still love part one. Like mm. now in my head I'll probably just group it together as like one science fiction film. Mm-hmm. Like, that, you know, that's for, what I was about to say. Yeah, right? It's like it's just one big movie. Now. But I mean <laughs> yeah. for for part one, yeah, no, I, t- I totally get it. The, yeah. it like I think now looking back even more I think it was really brave of Denny like artistically to cut it off at the certain point that he did or structure the film the way he did because he easily could have like overstuffed it and got him to the writing of the sandworm but like the writing of the sandworm stuff like did not happen 
as early as I kind of thought it was going to, like in the film, like the, mm. you know, there was still that world building. There was that lore set up like, Oh, every, oh okay. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, all I'm trying to say is I understand your complaints mm-hmm. to the 1000% to try sure. to remove my bias out of it. I can totally understand that. Okay. What did you think about Doom Part Two, Reese? Having loved the first one, like yeah. as it should be. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I was so excited, and like Ben said, like Denny is one of my favorite directors, Same. and he's just a beast. So I knew it was going to be a good film, but I did not know it was going to be a perfect ten out of ten. I was saying to you guys earlier, like I was actually immersed from like the first minute to the end. Yeah. Yeah. Which for me, like, you know, as people who actually understand the technical side of film, sometimes I get pulled out by, you know, shitty VFX or something along the lines of like, oh, the pacing or whatever. But the whole time I was yeah. like, whoa, that was two hours and 45 minutes. Like it was. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, spotless. brilliant. It was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then sp- t- t- oh, mm-hmm. English words. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. 100%. Touching on <laughs> the VFX, like there was not a single frame in that film that was off in terms of, you know just vfx not looking the way it needed to like everything was so believable yeah. and so well done and denny's films are always yeah top tier like, like, like yeah. literally perfect in every way uh when it comes to that stuff yeah. but you this know, movie, hugh jackman was fully cg in prisoners eh? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm like, I'm like, hold on, no, he's I was like, <laughs> for a second, you're like, like actually, <laughs> I, I mean, I, it wouldn't surprise face me. replacement though. the whole time. Yeah. It, it wouldn't surprise me because that's how good, like the you know the quality yeah. of his movies are. So I was 100%. just like, yeah, yeah. was it? <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I mean, it was there wasn't a single moment in the movie that just stood out to me. I was like, you know what, that looks like CGI. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh no, we're on this world. We're yeah. on Arrakis. Mm-hmm. We're on Arrakis. Yeah. Yeah. We're on yeah. Getty Prime. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait to talk about that. That was some of my favorite filmmaking shit ever yeah mm-hmm. just before we get into that um, yeah let I, us just, know. I am just going to come out and say it um it's literally everything i wanted in the film and it was even more um it, it, like you guys said perfect 10 out of 10 mm-hmm. i mean i'm not going to have a different answer it's uh it's really cool the first time I, I read this book i was probably maybe 12 or 13 years old and i remember i rented it from the library in my hometown and i wish i bought that I wish I didn't return that copy because you can't get that <laughs> printing anymore. However, <laughs> I've read the book maybe nine, ten times throughout my That's life. It? Like I read it the first time I was thirteen. <laughs> it's massive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I usually try to read it at least once a year. So like all of the, a lot of these images and scenes are are like just burned into my mind, and to see it be realized in such a way was such a a powerful like cinematic experience that like I've really only had like in a couple of like the you know superhero films that we love you know what i mean yeah <laughs> i love how we've moved on from mentioning the title we're just mm-hmm. like yeah in those movies that we love <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well and uh, another thing to go off that point is like how many times have we been able to say wow that's exactly what we've wanted over the past five years oh yeah one, <laughs> it was such a one thousand refreshing percent. feeling leaving the theater not excited hating it. yeah i was like oh my god like i it, it brought back feelings i left the theater emotional because i was just like like wow like i'm actually yeah. like really happy about the 100%. movie that I just saw. And you're you know? emotional like, during it as well. Yeah, like, yeah. You're so immersed. And that's why I think the biggest thing that I took away from the film, it's like, wow, like they're like being immersed in a film, like that is still an art. Like that's mm-hmm. still possible. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of times we're getting like, you know, these like run of the mill, like superhero films that you're just kind of watching very passively. It's like, I don't know, maybe because we help, we see it on IMAX, but I think any kind of viewing that you see it or any viewing setting you see it in, you're going to be fully immersed in it. Yeah. And right. that is just, it's so powerful. That like, being said, 100% if you have the opportunity to see it in IMAX, do oh yourself yeah, you a to. favor and see it <laughs> in IMAX. The visuals and yeah. audio. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see no. it I'll never on not it. watch anything in IMAX. We say this <laughs> yeah. every time we yeah. go see a movie, but like it's true. Never yeah. again. Yeah, like if you want to see this film, if you are listening to this podcast or watching this and you have not seen the film, try to see it in the largest screen possible and the loudest theater possible. <laughs> yeah. that, yeah. Like I swear, no, I'm serious. Like yeah. I know it sounds like being sarcastic. Okay, stop yelling at Fully not. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it was basically, yeah, it was uh, an 11 out of 10, 10 out of 10, whatever you want to call it. Um, it was uh, an absolute masterpiece. It's my favorite, one of my favorite movies I've ever seen to take, I know, recency bias, but whatever. Like I said, I'm grouping one and two together. Yeah. No, this I, is like I, one I of the agree. greatest pieces of cinema that like I've ever seen. Like I yeah. haven't, this is like, when I, I was watching it and I was like, this is probably what it was like watching Lawrence of Arabia back in the 60s for the first time. <laughs> Just like, a, it's like a spectacle. Yeah. 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 Florence of a Henderson. Um, Florence and the Machine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's actually their grandmother. <laughs> yeah. um, I have a question for you. Yeah. So 
Obviously, you're explaining to us the other night that there are many differences, many changes that he made to the movie as opposed to, you know, events that happen in the book. Mm -hmm. So with those changes being made, are you satisfied with the changes that he made? Obviously, you just said you love the movie and, you know, it's perfect. <laughs> but but from being a fan of the book, is there anything you wish he had kept or kept the same? Ooh, that's a good question. That's an excellent question. I think, okay. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think all of the changes that were made were all of the changes that were made were necessary to making a good film. Okay. One of the main differences from the book that I noticed is that uh, Thufir Hawat, do you guys remember him from the first one? He survives like the siege of Arakeen from like the first part, and mm-hmm. then he becomes the Baron's Mentat at the end and he just kind of like disappeared so i was like oh what the heck what's going on but that's all that carries with it a whole other subplot that i don't think i think if if denny were to put any more into the film it would have become too oversaturated slightly yeah. too overstuffed mm-hmm. yeah. but it become so, like some shows and movies where you know you go off on too many side quests mm-hmm. yeah exactly mm-hmm. so yeah. in, yep. like in, in short <laughs> no like in terms of the actual scenes like there wasn't really a scene that i was like really really missing from the book like everything like i, I could have done without though one thing that i will say okay sorry two things i will say the Hawat thing, like not being alive, like would have been kind of cool to see him okay. on Getty Prime, but you know, not a huge loss. Second thing, I was actually surprised that they did not touch on um, in the book. So remember uh, Kynes, the ecologist that mm-hmm. goes with them on the ornithopter thing mm-hmm. to see the spicy. So in the film, um, Kynes is a female. In the book, it's actually uh, a man, Liet Kynes, and Liet Kynes is Stilgar's brother, but also Chani's father. Okay, Chani's father. So in the movie, this movie, I thought we were going to get some t- context. I thought they were going to make this version of Kynes Chani's mother, which ah. I think would have been an interesting, um, because in the book, they kind of relate to the fact that they both lost a parent. They both lost a father. So I think, you know, it could have been a conversation in the film that kind of deepened the connection between Paul and Chani. But honestly, like, it's not a huge thread that I'm mad that they left out, to mm-hmm. be completely mm-hmm. honest. Um, only other thing I really wish we saw a guild navigator. Um, yeah, I was movie. looking forward to that. Yeah, I really Truly. wanted to see it, but he well, he's writing Messiah, so like there is a guild, a guild navigator named Edric is a main character in Doom Messiah. So I'm hopefully, like I mean, you know, when that movie gets made, when we're forty, um, <laughs> hopefully we'll see it. <laughs> but to answer your question, no. Okay. Um, other than those two little tiny things, um, I think you got to cut some stuff out. It's a long book, bro. It's a big book. Yeah. And it just would have been too overstuffed. Well, they had to put it into two movies. Legit, <laughs> so legit. At that and, point, it's like... And just, that's where Lynch's yeah. movie failed as well, because they tried to do this whole epic science fiction story in one film. You can't do that. True. Yeah, I, I was curious to, to hear what you had to say, because for someone like me who hasn't read the books and only knows information based off of what you have told me and, like, videos and stuff like that, I was curious to know if, like, there was anything, like, missing, so to speak. But I think this is a textbook example of what people should do when they're adapting books Mm -hmm. and movies, just Mm -hmm. like the Harry Potter movies did so well. I know there's always those people who are like, well, the books did it better. It's like, yeah, "Yeah, obviously like, (laughs) you know, but you have to make changes, creative choices and technical choices for stories to work for film and to contextualize a massive story like that in, you know, less than three hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So take that as a lesson. This goes for shows, miniseries, (laughs) Halo, um, <laughs> you know, they're not even close. Not though. even close. <laughs> no, we'll but go. there are many other examples in recent history. It's just like you can you can fully adapt material, whether it's you know a graphic novel, comic book material, book material, whatever the case may be, short story material, into cinema and make it work and make it good. One thousand percent. Without just throwing characters at the screen, being like, "Well, the characters are there; they'll love it." Well, yeah. it just yeah. comes down to you can just tell. Like even somebody who hasn't read the books, like you, it's like you can tell Denny knows the source material like he wrote it, mm-hmm. right? And, like you can tell yeah. the care and meticulousness yeah. and the nods to the reference material that mm-hmm. he is putting into the movie that it just sells it way more versus yeah. every other, you know adaptation film and tv series these days it's just like they're just hiring whoever and just you know slapping together something and i can't remember who said it the other night when we watched it i can't i think it was you ben when you said after watching dune and like you know knowing that denny also loves the book 
you saw influences of Dune in Arrival and Blade oh, yeah, Runner. Yeah, yeah. yeah, true. When you yeah. said that, I was like, oh my God, you are right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Um, yeah. But on that note too, just to add on to your point, you're probably going to hear a lot of me saying, in the book this, in the book that, this movie, yes. I don't want to be one of those people that's always like, oh, well, you know, in the book, because it's like, you know, <laughs> big deal, I read the book, like, yeah. you know, whatever. I really tried to, in the theater, like, I realized, like, you know what? Yeah, it is based on the book, and they are following the book pretty closely. However, like, the small liberties that it took, like, this film has, like, the auteur stamp on it. Like, it has Denny's DNA yeah. running all oh, yeah. through it. 100%. It is one... It's based on this book, and it's a very faithful adaptation, but it is Denny's fully adaptation. a whole other... It's its its own film, mm-hmm. and it stands on its own film, mm-hmm. right? Just like how the original Blade Runner took uh, the inspiration from that Philip K. Dick novel, um, mm-hmm. Do <laughs> Androids... <laughs> Do androids, do androids uh, dream of sheep? Dogs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, do androids dream of sheep? Um, it mm. you know it became its own. It became <laughs> it's, its own better. thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, so it's only one P. And- yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyways, should we get break down the actual like? Want to get into like the actual parts of the film? Or what? Hell yeah! What do you want to start with? Let's start Come with in, this, the let's start with the story. Let's start with the huh? Sorry, now we're just referencing. Footnote, before we get into that, I must say that day was amplified by the fact that we got to see James Gunn's super suit for the oh, first yeah. time in the Superman <laughs> yeah, movie. Yeah. And then we're laughing because uh, Dan Reese and I watched uh, 1978 Superman last night in honor of his birthday. Thanks for the invite. And there was, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> and, um, and there were... <laughs> Just multiple lines that do not age well. Yeah, like, you can tell it's a area. film of the era. We, we can't, yeah, we can't like, say them on here. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. So if you're wondering, watch the movie and you'll know yeah. right away. It's like, <laughs> ah, yeah, that, yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. But, but uh, you got want to you want to like actually get into nitty gritty of the story or what? Let's, like, let's let's start like let's just start story wise. What did you, how did you guys think of how the let's just take only Doom Part Two. Let's just not even talk about Part One for a while. Okay, I'm sorry. Just this film. Like, how did you think the plot was laced? through paced out because they did they covered a lot of stuff in this film how'd you guys think they did um i i thought it was great the only thing that threw me off, and i completely understand why obviously when he drinks the water of life um when sorry when paul specifically drinks yeah. the water of life like i i understood that yes his mind was about to be like unlocked so to speak but I also didn't expect such a steep like incline of his personality from that point forward. That like, was just a show, though. That's because he knew he knows that like his destiny is like the only way. But it's, like, I I understand that. But I'm saying like even down to like personal choices that he's making in that moment is just like, you know, he's like, oh my god, like if I do this, like all of a sudden, you know. And I, again, I'm not knocking this. Like I still love it, and like I think it is paced well. But yeah. like it kind of you know took me aback a little bit because he's just like. He's contemplating. He's seeing these visions. He's like, oh, my God, like, so many people are going to die at my hands. Drinks the water, wakes up, basically tells Chani to fuck off, and then he's screaming <laughs> at everybody all of a sudden. Literally. And I'm like, okay, and that escalated quickly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That um, really got out of hand fast. <laughs> if I can add one thing. I, Paul should I, lay low for a little bit. <laughs> I literally tried to – I literally said I was going to try not to be like this, but – in the novel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I did I, well, I, 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 like, I did this with Ron all through Star Wars, okay. so it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I will say, like, I think that I believe that choice was intentional because he reaches yeah. a point in the novel where he takes the water of life where he is at. So as if you notice, like, in part one and part two, like, his visions are clearer in part two. But in part one, so what happens is what's kind of established that he can see the future, but he can see multiple futures. Mm-hmm. So the future, though, always changes with what's happening. So it ebbs and flows. So he can't find a clear path to where he's trying to get to and mm-hmm. also stop the jihad. When he takes the water of life, you kind of know what happens. You don't get as much of a visualizer as you did with Jessica. So like you kind of know what happens and his mind opens up and all that. But what happens is he's at a fulcrum point at that point where he's like, you know what? He can only see one way. Yeah. And he's like, no, I, I literally have to commit to it. But in that way, he sees himself losing Chani. So I think what happens at it, like the way it's played by both Timothy Chalamet and Dea, like it's just it's so the interplay between them, like mm-hmm. and there were the way the way their relationship kind of grows into itself and then falls out yeah. is just like so well done. Yeah. But he kind of becomes apathetic because he's like, well, she's gonna get mad, but then she's gonna come around anyway. So it's like this is see literally the, the only <laughs> way to do it. Um, yeah. And I think it's essential 
to the point that the author was trying to make in the first place was that Paul's not necessarily a good guy. He's actually like the opposite. Yeah. Like him and Jessica are manipulating the Fremen, especially Jessica. Like she yeah. is like so blatantly manipulative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where she in became book, Emperor Palpatine. Literally, yeah. do it. <laughs> literally, <laughs> where in the book she's more she's more passive and takes Paul's lead actually, but this time it's the other way around. Because hmm. remember they were at odds with each other yeah, yeah. Um, before she went south. Oh my God, it's so good. But um, yeah, <laughs> just like as I'm talking about, it, I'm like it's so good. <laughs> but yeah, I can I can see how it, that could be like um, you know, uh, a jarring. It's kind not of transition. like it, it was jarring, but not in a way where I was like, oh, I don't like that. It was like it fully worked, and I fully agree with all of that. Mm-hmm. It was just like it was just shocking to me a little bit. But like I actually liked that it shocked me that much because I was like, yes, mm-hmm. like I want to see Paul like grow into this now. I'm tired yeah. of seeing how he was the whole time in this movie. Like yeah. now I want to see him like it happens yeah. take charge. Time, right? mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. there was like so many moments in the movie that i just looked back and i was just it was so well integrated into the film like i loved the sandworm sequence or the sandworm riding sequence like every Mm -hmm. single one of those like you see the beginning of it and then the payoff at the end when the battle sequence happens is so cool Mm -hmm. obviously the uh the harkonnens were like an insane sequence that was my favorite and like austin (laughs) butler was scary like he was, he was terrifying. so good. Oh yeah, like that that fight you, sequence. At the you end. described it best, Alex. When we got out of the theater, you're like, I just felt dirty around yeah. Yeah. all the Harkonnens because yeah. you're just like, what? Are, like you don't know what they're gonna do next. Mm-hmm. You actually have no idea because you know with most films you can kind of predict, but like at that point, you know they just turn around slicing someone's neck, someone's dying over here, yeah. they're drugging yeah. this person, this person's carrying the seed of Austin, and it's just like, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> they're, what's they're happening? Plot- and like the par- <laughs> like they're plotting against each other, like the Baron plots against them, like yeah. you know mm-hmm. to set him up. The one Atreides guy was not drugged like they're supposed to be, like yeah. yeah. All sorts of stuff, like how you know he makes um, Raban like kiss his feet and it's his own brother. Like, it's mm-hmm. just the thing that uh, that struck me about the Harkonnen scenes is like when you're on Getty Prime, like first of all, visually, like I don't think I've seen anything cooler like in a really long time yeah, than yeah. all the Getty Prime stuff, especially like the, the when the black sun comes Getty out Leo. and they oh, shoot yeah. through the in the black camera. fireworks, Ooh, like, yeah. like oh my god, yeah, ink, yeah. Ink <clears throat> the ink fire, just all the little tiny details were just like phenomenal. Shot in infrared too to make their yeah. like Which eyes look weirder That's, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I love too. Like you can really see, like again, going back to where you can see Dune and Blade Runner, but like all of like the uh, the Wallace Corp sequences in Blade Runner remind me very much yep. of. That's literally it, the first yeah. thing I said. Except out of the in theater, except I in think. color, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like that, there was like one shot literally where you see the fireworks coming through the windows yep. and stuff, and he's and walking the through. And, like through it, it was like when wa- you're walking through Wallace's, uh, and like you could see all the yeah. different it, replicants. It, it, and stuff. I'm like, hey, the yeah, dynamic yeah, lighting and yeah, everything. Yeah, like, yeah. Beautiful. And then Han scores to the dynamic lighting too. It's just like a lot of synth swells in this. I'm like, this is literally Blade Runner in the desert, and I am here for it. Yeah, because it's literally my favorite movie of all. Time. It's the best way to describe it. I also what well, one quick little thing I would like to say is the beginning of the movie. I was kind of worried at one point that we were going to spend so much time on the him being integrated into the Fremen. Like at one point, I was like, "Oh boy, we're going to be here for a while until he yeah. rides the worm," and then he does, and I'm like. Perfect. Yeah, that was the it, perfect yeah, amount yeah. of time of like world building, character 100%. building, let him grow. You know, there's challenge, but he succeeds because like, you know, some people just take so much time with that. And it's like, okay, we get it. It's literally, it's two ends of the spectrum. You have like Ant-Man, Quantumania, that spends absolutely zero time on character development <laughs> and is literally <laughs> only plot. Literally. Yeah. And then you have other films, I can't think of any right now, but you have other films that just sit in that character development space for like way too long there's it's a fi- there's a fine balance mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he hit it perfectly obviously yeah thousand yeah. percent yeah because yeah. he's the best <laughs> literally yeah. the best though yeah. yeah i would go as far as to say he's like the greatest filmmaker of recent time at least i agree i yeah. mean like I, like it's and this is coming from me because you guys know how much i love nolan and i mm-hmm. still think nolan is still one of the greatest but i looked i was in the conversation we had the other i also day. think that too i'm like he denny hasn't missed like there's yeah. not a single film of not and not to say that nolan has you know bad movies but there are movies i'm like you know i have a hard time you know t- trying to justify sitting and rewatching. but <laughs> like me too but but like they're like every the sing- night rises yep. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i knew we were gonna go there i was gonna say <laughs> i was gonna say tenet but i was gonna I say tenet, tenet as well but yeah i i like tenet more than you guys but yeah tenet. but i mean Dun- like Dunkirk look at denny's filmography yeah, though i'm not a big fan of Dunkirk. oh my god either. i love anyway, Dunkirk. Um, <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are all messed up <laughs> And what we're trying story. to say is he's one of the greatest <laughs> filmmakers of yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like are. Nolan yeah. and him are yeah. like, yeah, yeah. You know, interchangeable. Yeah. Okay, uh, how about we go through maybe our favorite either like shot, so visual, or our favorite scene as a visual whole. All right. 
So, Reese, why don't you start us off? Okay. Well, since we already talked about the, uh, is it Gady Prime? Getty Prime. Getty, Getty I've, always, Prime? I've okay. always read it, Getty Prime. Okay, but. so Getty Prime. Like, that stuff when he's walking down the hallway and, uh, like, the Benny Jesser girl was there, too. Like, that visually blew my mind. Yeah. I was like, the dynamic lighting, everything was perfect. Yeah. But, like, emotionally speaking, I honestly, the way they did the choreography of the end fight was just like the yeah. power behind yeah. every hit the way they shot it like everything was just spot on like i was actually at the edge of my seat there and yeah. most fight scenes now you're kind of like okay you know this is happening but i was like i actually don't know the outcome here i, I <laughs> was i was too and i knew the outcome and i was like <laughs> I'm, I'm like sitting there i'm like on the edge of my seat my chest is clenched yeah and i'm like bro i know who wins this why am i like, <laughs> why am i doing this yeah. why am i like this yeah and so yeah. that that just like it hit home and uh, especially like i don't know the visuals like to me, that seemed like something where any other person would have shot that in the medium, and maybe they did, but it didn't feel like it. So yeah. everything was just spot on. Yeah. The, like the angles, the music, or actually, there was no music. That's something yeah. that I really yep. loved about yeah, it. Yeah, music it was, it was just it. full sound effects. So you're yeah. like, you're in it. You're yeah. in that mm-hmm. moment. So I don't know. To me, that was just obviously it's the climax of the film, but they fucking nailed it. Yeah. 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 In terms of my favorite, sh- of like my favorite shot visually, um, I always think of there are actually. Sorry to be annoying. There are two <laughs> shots that I always think of when uh, Fade Rotha is getting crowned in that like huge like uh, Harkon and throne room before he goes to Arrakis, mm, yeah, and yeah. just like the way the light and the colors like are kind of like cascading like off of like the mm-hmm. pillars behind him. I'm like, this is insane. Mm-hmm, and yeah. then the other shot is um, the, it's like the the close or sorry like the long shot of uh paul walking from the south i think it was him walking from the south. he's oh, got his hood on and then now. a sandworm comes yeah. up oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah and i was like this is insane yeah it was like Anakin this is crazy. storming the jedi temple and oh, yeah. 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 Oh, and also oh, also <laughs> like in terms of like crazy visuals when he gets to i think it's when he gets to the temple in the south and it's that top down shot mm. and he's Ooh. walking through all the fremen's heads i'm like yeah, this oh is, yeah like vis- yeah. this is insane there's like a visual. million yeah, people there yeah. Yeah. yeah this is yeah. crazy visuals um yeah i love that in terms of my actual favorite scene though um ooh, so shit i don't know probably the one that always like i've been thinking about a lot is that um like the scene with uh, Fade Rotha and um, Fenring, that Benny Jesuit that likes to do because like that hallway shot is just like, <laughs> yeah, it's just like, absolutely, I puked. It's no, absolutely literally. insane. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think we literally looked at each other in the theater. I was like, oh. you literally like, like, yeah, see, see, yeah, Dune, like, Dune. Like, yeah. Dune's a good movie. I'm like, yes, Alex, I fucking like. <laughs> I know. I should have been sitting next to Ben. I'm like, just see, you're wrong. You're wrong about it. Um, Ben's yeah. just dead by the end of the movie. I was <laughs> like, punching I'm just him. elbow in the chest. I look the over, I'm just slumped. <laughs> yeah, kind of every shot. Right? I'm just like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> um, yeah, the, even the, that is you, just like the establishing shot of when he's like walking through and like you're yeah. seeing the light and everything. I'm like, this is what am I watching? Yeah. What am I watching here? Yeah. Um, yeah. Insane. Um, my favorite scene, though, probably. Sorry, did I say that? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah. Uh, also, the. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he just says the entire movie. Sorry, I like the entire movie. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I love oh, the entire movie. Stay excited. When, I like it. I like when, it. Yeah, when, he puts it. when he puts his ring on, he says, I, and he declares it on the Duke yeah. of Arrakis again. I'm like, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, it was good. Yeah, I, uh, I I think visually one of my favorite shots, literally every shot in that movie, even if it was like a quick <laughs> insert, was the oh, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, that's Let's what you, set that's, that precedent. That's what you 100%. get when you get Denny and uh, yeah. Greg Fraser in the yeah. same 100%. room. They're like ev- even every, any insert shot was yep. just like bing. They probably spent sixteen literally. days on like, it. Yeah. He's picking up a cup. Percent. Fuck it, we'll yeah. shoot it in yeah, five yeah. days. <laughs> There'd be like random <laughs> inserts of like like the the moon, like oh yeah, stuff, oh, yeah. Boxes, I'd be like, yeah. what are the gradients going on, like in this color palette right now? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, um, it's crazy. Crazy. <laughs> um, one of my favorite shots though, and then <laughs> you're gonna laugh at me saying this, but like the parallel yeah. to Christianity mm. when they open the the vault of the nuclear warheads uh, yeah. um, being like a circular door and if anyone knows like you know like Catholicism or whatever it's like the tomb of Jesus was the circular big stone that they rolled aside and I thought that parallel was like crazy both visually because like when you see it from the inside and the, the circular tablets moving it literally looks like the eclipse like kind of lifting off the sun mm. and I was like this is insane and like the colors were just nuts i'm like okay mm-hmm. and then yeah. the parallel to that as well being like you know instead of like you know jesus rising from like his his tomb it's like 
war is like rising from within. Right. It's Paul. the Atreides house rising yeah, back up. Exactly. It's like, oh, so we forgot like, about our nukes that we had. Yeah. <laughs> so like that was nuts. But like, I think my, one of my favorite scenes without repeating literally both of you is, you know, when Fade Ratha is getting seduced in that hallway and like dynamic lighting Amazing crazy. Scene, like that was yeah. just insane. It was terrifying and also just super intriguing. And the but, score, yeah. like the rhythmic yeah. score. like that you Amazing. Get, like, yeah. Oh, Since insane. Wells and all that. But my favorite scene was when he puts the house of trades ring back on as yeah, well like that was go. insane yeah, i got crazy. full full blown chills crazy and like i think you mentioned this too when we got out of the theater like just the perspective in which that was shot was crazy like through the crowds so yeah like you were an observer and like you felt like you're like okay paul like yeah okay, sorry to bother you yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, yeah it was such a great shot like they yeah. could have done an epic shot from behind nope. but it was like oh i don't know yeah, I, don't, I don't know why yeah. that shot stood out it was just like i felt no, like I felt holy shit yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah amazing how about um, you just want to preface by saying there was about like a thousand times where I had like severe body chills, mm-hmm. like just like from the score swelling up matched with the cinematography and everything going on. Yeah. I mean, it's almost impossible to choose, but I said it before. And that first time that he gets on the sandworm mm-hmm. was an absolutely incredible sequence. And then the shot of him rising up from the sand and like, you just see like how fast he's going with the, with the, with the sand blowing by. And then the cut back to, um, uh, like the view, the people watching him <laughs> riding on the sand, like that was, yeah, that was, was sweet. Insane. Yeah, the score for that was nuts. Yeah. Um, and then there was just this. I remember there was this one, like it was not random, but like I looked at you, and I was like, holy shit! Like when they were bombing, the Harkonnens were bombing that mountain, oh, like, just, like in the theater, it. like oh, just the sound, siege, siege yeah, oh, yeah. oh my god, yeah. just like the sound of the rockets. I was just like, like I was literally yeah. shaking. I could feel everything. Like, the impact. I kind of want to watch it in another theater that didn't have that sound system that we were in, just to kind of see like the difference. Because like yeah. I, I, it's probably like still so dynamic, like in any other theater. But like that particular one we were watching, like I got like a migraine from it. Like it was like, oh my god. Like, I'm there. Like, yeah. this crazy. <laughs> I'm on the sandwich. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. And then there was one other shot, which, like, at the end, like, the final battle sequence, when you see all of the sandworms riding in, and they're going into yeah. war. And then, but it's like a drone shot where it's coming from behind the Emperor's ship, and you just see, like, everything going down on the ground at once. I was like, this is the craziest thing yeah. I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's so hard to pick, but. <laughs> the Emperor stuff was really cool yeah. for oh. me to see, too. <laughs> and, uh, and, like, having Chris. <laughs> <laughs> walk it just in there like you're there watching this whole movie and it's the craziest shit ever and then you just have christopher walking me like the fremen find them <laughs> like, you know what I mean? like, and i'm like yo what the fuck like, this is crazy find them find them bring them to me right? and, um, it's like he's simultaneously like the best casting for out of that but yeah. also the most distracting because i'm just like yeah, this is chris walking like you know it's like all right chris here's your line find them the fremen find them <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, classic Christopher Walken stuff. Yeah. But, uh, I loved him as the Emperor. Um, Florence, Florence Pugh as uh, Irulan was uh, great too. The entire cast phenomenal. Javier amazing yeah. as Stilgar, mm-hmm. yeah, and just and funny man. too, like funny throughout the yes. whole movie, but not in a Marvel way. I was yeah. just gonna say, I like it just wasn't forced, yes. which was good. Yeah, it wasn't like you know something serious happened. Well, throwing a joke, but it's it like, was it was hilarious. Oh yeah, just Paul does one thing, and he's like, Lisa not going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. like, the uh, second he murders. Uh, <laughs> the fade rock. Yeah, he's like, yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I noticed throughout the entire movie is uh, I love, um, like, in terms of the nuances of Javier's performance, there are moments in the movie where you can just, like, see, like, the religious fervor, like, in his face. Like, when Paul does something crazy. Yeah. And, like, he, like, believes that prophecy. Like, that, like, that was, like, super powerful. Like, when he stands up with, like, his, uh, with his Chris knife, like, in that siege where he does his, you know, where he's like leading everyone to like the fight, yep. like the look on his face was just like, it's so intense. And it's just like, he believes so hard in it. I just thought that was absolutely phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Speaking of that scene quickly, like yeah. how he proves to everybody that he's the prophet by re- telling them like, yeah. you know, like they're, they're only stuff that they would know. And yep. then you see everybody's reaction and like everybody starts to bow. That was another moment. Yeah, he did like, like faction by faction. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I love how Jessica also like laces in that interplay is like, oh yeah, like the believers like in the North, like we need to start like, you know, getting them first, getting the weakest ones first and then bring in the others. And I like how that disconnect between Shawnee's from the North and her friends from the North, the south they're like they're older so like they're more religious like Mm -hmm. and that's one the last thing i will say that's one thing i do love about this universe in general even outside the movie is a lot of science fiction films and properties that you see ones that are 
set in like the far flung like future from now it's either like you know humans are so technologically advanced that we're all completely like either reliant or integrated with technology and there's aliens mm -hmm. which is all cool like i'm all here for it but in dune like this universe yeah they're so far flung into the future but like they are they are uh um sorry how do you say it they are disparaging of technology like they don't use it in the likeness of a person right there's no real aliens it's just humans that colonize like the uh like colonize the universe but it's the 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 power of religion and the power of myth and like this kind of messiah figure is like so crucial to everything even in like the future like a lot of science fiction films there's a disconnect from that religious perspective it's mm -hmm. just so interesting and fresh to see like this kind of science fiction universe where certain elements take precedence yeah. right mm -hmm. and that's the whole thing the Benny Jesuit like the Benny Jesuit were the ones that planted that you know um that Kwisatz Haderach legend mm -hmm. anyways so good. you know I think that's a perfect that. transition into you know another sci-fi property that mm. has a central focus to uh religious extremism and that's Halo yeah mm. um and for no reason added that yeah but not in a good way no not the Covenant. In a good not in the, you know, <laughs> there, there's the whole great journey thing going on in the show currently, but uh, not in the way that you would think it'd be presented in, just like the games did, but instead uh, with McKee, a human character that is in the Covenant for some <laughs> reason, convincing the Arbiter um, to go find the Halo. The mm -hmm. Mustang Mach-E herself. <laughs> yeah, the Mustang Mach-E. Yeah. The best new car on the market. And, um, and also just adding in random mystics and stuff on yeah, weird planets. Yeah, get that out of here. <laughs> like, <laughs> we just had a whole episode. Um, of nothing. Of nothing. Just bypassing it, the fall you know what? reach. <laughs> in, in thinking about it more, like, Vanek's funeral was, like, it, it was kind of nice to see that connect. And it was kind of like a leveling moment for everybody. But it would have been nice to just start off with that maybe and then go right back into action instead of... You know, going on this huge side quest to uh, to find uh, Soren's like boy and all this stuff. It's like no, like truly no offense, but like nobody cares. It's like yeah. I want to see Chief get back in his armor and just go destroy Covenant and tear them in half. If it wasn't like Fall of Reach, this random kid. Yeah, yeah. But they chose the random kid. <laughs> why, and now why are we even spending time on that? It's like, yeah. yes. Well, that's <laughs> you got to tell a human see. story, right? Well, yeah, of course. <sighs> I, yeah. I just Should can't... they keep getting mad at Halsey, too, for no reason? Yeah, yeah. I it's can't like... <laughs> get over just how, like, Chief is just a dick. Like, he's just, there's nothing like... He's a dick, and all the and heroic a baby. moments go yeah. to other characters. Yeah, like, he's not, there's nothing, like, Chief about this guy. Like, this isn't even, like, people are like, oh, this is John. It's like, it's not even, like, John. Like, it's just, like, it's just some guy who's, like... <laughs> He's just, he's miserable, he's whiny, and he's, like, just a dick. Like, or, like, his his teammate, like, Riz is... Riz is, like, visibly... In incapacitated. Like, you know, those, like, standing... Yeah, the walking like, sticks. Walking yeah, sticks. Yeah, she's and he's get like, up! Get up! We're not done here! She's like, it's not over. Like, do you see me right now? Yeah. He's like, get up! I don't care! And you're like, what is yeah. going on? Yeah. And then Quan Ha is just, like, underslinging a massive LMG, which, you know, <laughs> yeah. in the game, Spartans are, like carrying heavy and you know a lot of ki kickback <laughs> and then there's this five six girl just, just like bullet spraying <laughs> everywhere and you're like and then what's chief doing laying on the ramp like oh, oh yeah i can't do it like, <laughs> Mammy. Mammy. <laughs> oh like that right there i was like fuck this show yep. like I, I went from being kind of like hey it's a different universe to like i don't care if this wasn't even halo this is the worst thing my eyes have ever fucking but again it's like bringing it back to you were able to adapt source material properly to use, you know, a lot of core elements, but then take liberties, you know, that's, that's been done. Dune is the greatest, <laughs> yeah, the greatest example of that in recent history. Why are you deviating so far? I hate the silver timeline excuse. It's like, well, you know, we just, we gave ourselves this, you know, parallel universe just so we can do whatever we want. It's like, sick. That's not a good idea, though. Yeah, then don't use Chief for any of the characters that already have a story. Just make you, it you a can, random Spartan yeah, story. Yeah, you can give yourself yeah. creative liberties, but, like, there's so much rich, like, source material. Like, all the religious stuff with the prophets and stuff is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like, that story in itself was way ahead of its time for games, but even just general, you know, sci-fi properties Yeah, in, you know, the early 2000s or whatever. So, like, why not focus on that? Focus on what people love it for and not what people literally hate it for and what 343 literally, you know, sewered themselves for, for lack of a better term, when 4-5 and, you know, beyond mm -hmm. went. So, yeah, anyway, I'm not going to talk about that anymore because I'll throw this table to the roof, but... 
Um, yeah, I haven't been watching it, so it's nice to kind of check in every once in a while, see how it's uh, progressing. <laughs> uh, I'm honestly <laughs> jealous of you that you haven't yeah. been watching it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we came home from Dune the other night. It was like, you ready to ruin yeah, our mood Yeah, when you by left watching? after <laughs> we watched the, the most recent episode, we were like, well, that just ruined our day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went from like like the highest of highs, seeing the greatest film of all time, to like fucking yeah. Yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. It just, it just upsets yeah. me so much. Like, here's a character we know and love, like, especially, you know, like you were saying, you read that book. How old were you? Young, so it's ing- ingrained in your yep. like mind, and you know Same. you grew up with it, and so did we. We all did with yep. like Master Chief, and you know the Halo universe, and then you just go and do whatever you want. It's like you're Literally. taking a big risk. It's like, what is your target audience? Well, you know, we want to make tar- well. The target audience realistically is us. Yeah, like, I know, but I'm saying people that like Halo. It's supposed 100%. to be that, yeah. but it's no. not for no. that. Like, yeah. They're <laughs> instead they're alienating the people that actually love Halo and they love the source. And material. it's not like it's the first season where they're like, "Oh, we can course correct now." Like you had time to see mm. all the feedback you and then said, double, "Fuck it, we'll still go down. anyway." And <laughs> you can tell they will just not learn a lesson too, because in all like the uh, the press junket, whatever they did for season two, they were like, "Yeah, this is kind of a soft reboot," and uh, you know we're really going to centralize it back on Chief. It's like. No, you're not. Mm-hmm. Like just because you're focusing more on him now doesn't mean that you're you're writing him well all of a sudden. You're not actually. You're making him a dick. You're yeah. making him the worst player on his team because literally every heroic moment goes to other characters and he's always left either injured on the ground or just <laughs> screaming. Like and you're like, what am I watching right now? It's yeah, not a yeah. leader, it's a fucking bitch. Yeah. For lack of a better yeah. term. Hey, so. we saw that you guys hated that he always had his helmet off, so we're also going to take away his armor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sick! Mm-hmm. I love seeing Chief go through the Fall of Reach without his armor. Oh, wait, he's not even there. Yep. Five days later oh, yeah, from the, the Fall we, of Reach. We saw oh, the so glassing of Reach through a closing pelican door. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah that's it. Awesome. Pelic- it wasn't even a pelican. It was just yeah. some random... Perfect. Uh, love Soren's it. white... It's like if you really wanted to do like a cool... <laughs> I feel like if you really wanted to do like if you wanted a reference on how to do like the fall of reach like correctly but have like a human story in there mm. go watch uh Rogue One. Uh yes. Yeah. You know so what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's right there. Or read any like, of the books since you're you know a yeah, showrunner yeah. of a uh, beloved franchise maybe yeah. do some research. There's a, and... there's a crazy yes, producers agree. if you're watching this there's a crazy piece of source material you could like watch through uh even just on YouTube that's actually the the game. Um <laughs> yeah. Uh, called Halo Reach. <laughs> Crazy stuff goes yeah. on there. It'd be great to reference, but um, <sighs> that's okay. Um, anyway, let's move on from that. One last thing we should touch on is um, there's been a few little Superman, yeah, a few little Superman um, kind of tidbits we've got. We got the first look at David Cornsweat's suit, okay? Oh, Which, bro. right off the bat, how are we feeling about the Alex Ross um, super symbol? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Sorry. So Sorry, a, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I was going to say, th- there's a few cool things going on here. We yeah. got the classic color scheme. Mm-hmm. Okay. We got the, the full-bodied yellow, red, blue. We have the 40s kind of like yellow surrounding the S, yeah. which is nice interesting. Little, nice yeah. little bur- And then we got the bronze. Alex Ross S. Um, I think it's phenomenal. Yeah. So, Ben, um, <laughs> I would also like to say um, it looks great. Yes, it's good stuff. <laughs> Very excited for it. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, it looks amazing. Like, to preface wait. though, we it's not the actual suit though; it's just the S. Like we haven't actually seen the full. We haven't suit seen the full yet. suit, but it is no, the yeah. S that is yeah. on the suit. But sometimes yeah. seeing the S is all you need to know. Mm-hmm. It's the only visualizer mm-hmm. that you yeah. kind of need. There yeah. are a few um, details that are left undetermined, like um, underpants and no underpants situation. It's um, been a hot topic of contention. I gotta see the I gotta see the boots too. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotta see the belt as well. <laughs> I got to see how the cape is integrated into the shoulders. True. Mm-hmm. True. Is but, it going to be deep neck? Is it going to be tighter up? Yeah. Like, what, do we, um, what do we got going yeah. here? Or is it going to be um, the new 52 <clears throat> style um, where it was like uh, basically like a collared um, Ralph Lauren polo? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to go right to that. No, 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 no. We're not. No, no. He keeps but, um, posting, and by he, I mean James Gunn keeps posting a lot of Alex Ross art. And when he posted that photo, he was replying yeah. to comments and people were like oh like alex ross alex ross he was like yep like based off of that design and then he's been sharing a lot of alex's ross's work which is like very very it's plain but stoic like yes high neck big flowy cape wide symbol on the chest no defined muscle structure which is also interesting to me and from the looks of the photo too i don't think this suit's going to have Cavill style muscle definition. I'm I think okay they're going to go back to well. That's a terrible example <laughs> yeah, yeah, <literally. laughs> because the toy gave him so musculature. But yeah. <laughs> but in that well, movie, the, um, he's still big. You can tell he's massive. Like 
Brandon Routh was huge. He yeah. was also like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and shredded, massive. Yeah. But the suit didn't give him musculature, and it wasn't very textured, although yeah. it did have slight texture. So I'm curious to see how this is going to look in, in its entirety. And the underpants thing is interesting, too. We're going to see. We're going to see. There are I don't still, think that's going to... Um, hmm, there are still some know. details that are left to be determined. I really like how they're using Alex Ross as a touchstone or inspiration yeah. because Alex Ross is known for having a very kind of like old school bronze silver age take on the yeah. um on the suit the one thing i will say though is i really hope that they are either paying alex ross for consulting yeah. on it or like paying him for actually doing artwork or concept art for the film because well, he reposted it too i double checked this actually today okay because i was going to be like oh is he aware of this but he, he actually reposted that photo too and okay, he was good. like like Good. he seems like he's in it, and then okay, James Gunn commented on his repost of it too. So good. it's like I'm sure there is. And an, you know what? Another uh, another great example of using great source material, mm-hmm. um, at least as a visual cue, right? Which yeah, um, you know, the Halo Show can uh, can take a note of. Mm-hmm. The other thing too that's been really cool is we're getting a couple of like we got a couple behind the scenes photos of like the cast with like James yes. Gunn kind of like hanging out. There seems to be um, a good energy mm-hmm. around the actual production of the film, mm-hmm. yeah. which is contrary to what's been going on <laughs> prior. Yeah. So Most, that's always a good sign. It doesn't yeah. guarantee it's going to be a great movie. You could have great, you can have like, I mean like how many student films that we have like a great time on set and it was like garbage. The, the worst end. thing in the world. <laughs> However, on a big budget Hollywood <laughs> film, it's nice to see the camaraderie. It's nice to see that everyone seems to be in a good place actually yeah. filming it. So I think that'll just breed um, a better project. 100%. So. And we got uh, our first tease via Rachel Brosnahan's um, TikTok of the look of Lex. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lex yep. full bald, Nick Holt looking pretty good. Looks good. And then the highlight for me, which not a lot of people are talking about, is like David Corn's wet, like pre like preparation for the role was like a very slender dude. Like he's still, he's tall, he's six, four, but like you can definitely tell that he's been like bulking because yeah. when he like leans his head over in that TikTok, like he looks like so much wider and you're like, <laughs> right, right. Oh my heavens. Like yep. he's going to, he's going to fill the <laughs> muscles or not. He's going to fill the suit out at the very yeah. least. So I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing him cause he has that same like Chris Reeves, Henry Cavill charm and yep. chiseled kind of golden age look to him. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, mm. I'm excited. What about what? What did you guys think? Anything I thought it was too? great. Everything you guys said. Yeah, yeah. perfect. I also like how, how it, uh, like border of the photo was like snow or ice. Yeah, which I'm guessing is like fortress of solitude. Yeah, fortress yep. of solitude. Yeah, yeah. Nod there. So yeah. that was pretty cool. I'm get. I'm already getting hyped for this movie. Like, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting. That really was the perfect up. cherry on top of like that day going to see Dune. It was just yeah. like right before we went to the theater. He he posted that, and we were all like. That's amazing. Yeah, we're already fired up, and then, yeah. yeah, it just yeah. felt like old times, being happy for things. For yeah. yeah, yeah. It took us back I to a couple of years ago when we would go to the theater, and you know, we would go and like ha- like eat before we went. Saw it, like talk about how great everything coming out is. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. We honestly, I haven't had that feeling in no. a long time. No, so nice literally feeling. two years. Yeah. So and like honestly, to wrap everything up, if you have not seen Doom Part Two, please go rush out to your nearest theater, preferably IMAX. Mm-hmm. And go watch this movie yeah. because it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's an event. Like, like, when's the last time? I mean, like, I guess Oppenheimer, but like, when's the last like event? Like, you know, cinema like has really had right. Yeah. I think this is this is that. Thank you so much for joining us. We really, really do appreciate you checking us out, and we hope that you enjoyed Dune if you've seen it already. If you haven't. Uh, why the hell are you at the end of this what video? What are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, please hit that like button. really, really does help us out. It helps us create more content. And also subscribe because then you're not even going to see our content. And that's unfortunate. Why would you do something like that? Why so would you dumb. set yourself up for failure So like dumb. that? Anyway, <laughs> see ya. Love you, miss you.